Welcome to lecture one on political parties. Parties play an important role in facilitating voting by organizing elections and simplifying choices. A political scientist once stated, the political parties created democracy and modern democracy is unthinkable save in terms of the parties. Now this view runs counter to a long-standing and deeply seated distrust of parties. But without the parties, voters would face a daunting challenge of choosing between scores of candidates for each office. They would need to research the policy positions of each individual candidate in order to make an educated choice. The definition of a political party is an organized group that attempts to influence government by getting its members elected to important government offices. Also, identification with or support of a particular party or cause is known as partisanship. Now, the Constitution makes no mentions of parties, and some of the framers and early leaders of the country worried about parties, which they sometimes called factions. George Washington, in his farewell address, warned that parties, quote, may become potent engines by which cunning, ambitious, and unprincipled men will, will be enabled to subvert the power of the people and assert for themselves the reins of government, end quote. John Adams, our second president, also dreaded political parties, which he considered evil. While not part of the constitutional structures, parties play an important role in facilitating citizen action and voting by organizing election and simplifying choices. Political parties help narrow voters' choices. They make national and state elections work. American voters take for granted the peaceful transfer of power from one party to another. In new democracies, holding power may be more important than democratic principles. Well-established parties help to stabilize democracy. Historians refer to the sets of parties that are important in any given time as a party system. The United States has not always had the same two par dominant parties. Party systems can change even if the same two parties dominate. This occurs when divisions and coalitions of the parties change. There have been six distinctive party systems in U.S. history. The first party system emerged largely out of practical necessity. They needed to organize office holders who shared their views so that the government could act. In 1787, parties began to form as citizens debated ratifying the United States Constitution. To get Congress to pass its measures, President Washington had to fashion a coalition among the factions. Alexander Hamilton built an informal Federalist Party, while Washington stayed above politics. Jefferson and other officials despised Hamilton and opposed the policies that he favored. Their overriding concern was the success of the new government. Personal loyalty to Washington was a close second. Despite his opposition to Washington's policies, Jefferson stayed in the cabinet through most of the first term. When he left the cabinet at the end of 1793, many who had joined him in opposition to the administrator's economic policies remained in Congress, forming a group of legislators opposed to the Federalist fiscal policies and eventually to Federalist foreign policies, which appeared to be soft on Britain. This party was later known as the Republicans, then as Democratic Republicans, and finally as just Democrats. Now, the Federalist Party represented New England merchants. They supported protective tariffs, they supported creation of a national bank, and they advocated for a strong national government. The Jeffersonian Republicans, later known as Democrats, represented the small southern farmers. They supported free trade. They had a close relationship with France, and of course they supported states' rights. The second party system emerged in the 1830s. 
party politics were reinvigorated following the election of 1824, in which the leader in the popular vote, Democrat Andrew Jackson, failed to achieve the necessary majority in the Electoral College votes and was defeated by John Quincy Adams in the runoff election in the House of Representatives. Jackson, brilliantly aided by Martin Van Buren, a veteran party builder in New York State, later knitted together a winning coalition of regions, interest groups, and political doctrines to win the presidency in 1828. The Democrats were essentially supporters of Andrew Jackson. They supported, a, uh, they had strong support in the South and Midwest, and they favored free trade. They were against the protective tariffs. Now, the Whig Party rose in opposition to Jackson. They were strong in the Northeast and among the merchants. They were united more by opposition to Democrats than to their policy, and they emphasized the candidate's personal qualities. Well, a lot of people ask, what happened to the Federalist Party? Well, the Federalists were, in essence, pro-British, and, of course, after the War of 1812, when we fought another war with Britain, that was effectively the last nail in the coffin for them. So really for uh, almost a whole decade there was democrats were the only game in town until of course jackson's two terms and as president there was a lot of opposition that came uh, up to oppose some of his policies and that party or that informal party was essentially known as the whigs but now by the time that jackson and van buren got it in the White House in 1837, the Democratic Party had become a large nationwide movement with national and state leadership, a clear party doctrine, and a, a good grassroots organization. Now, the Whigs, who seceded the Federalists as the opposition party, were nearly as strong. In 1840, they put their own man, General William Henry Harrison, into the White House. Thus, the two-party system had been reborn. The third party system emerged in the lead up to the Civil War. Out of the crisis over slavery evolved the second Republican Party, the first being a national Republican Party that existed for barely a decade in the 1820s. The second Republican Party ultimately adopted the nickname Grand Ole Party, or the GOP. Abraham Lincoln was elected in 1860 with support not only of the financers, industrialists, and merchants, but also of many workers and farmers. For 50 years after 1860, the Republican coalition won every presidential race except for Grover Cleveland's victories in 1884 and 1892. The Democratic Party, however, survived with its durable white male base in the South. What did the Republicans stand for? Well, they wanted to grant the right to vote to the formerly enslaved African Americans. They, however, remained essentially the party of the North. They had strong support from business and the middle class. Now, the Democrats remained competitive despite losing the Civil War and the South succession. They were the dominant party in the South after Reconstruction ended. Now, they did have some support in the North from immigrants and the working class.